Okay, this is going to be the Cornelius Hoolan Farm, part 11, here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we're here at the second U.S. Dragoon room inside the Cornelius Hoolan Farmhouse. And we're going to take a look at this room that you get to stay in here. This is the Dragoon Room. And of course, there is a portrait of Abraham Lincoln over on the wall. Now, the second U.S. Dragoons were regular cavalry. Um, and when they fought during the American Civil War in 1861, they actually had their uniforms piped in orange. And here's a painting done by Don Trioni of a Dragoon soldier with the orange piped uniform, also the very high boots. Um, and now, during the American Civil War, cavalrymen were to wear yellow, but the Dragoons were very flamboyant. They were a pre-war existing unit, and they wore orange, and they refused to change to the general ordered color of Federal Cavalry. These guys were, again, very flamboyant. Uh, they wrote songs about themselves. Here's a song for the U.S. Second Dragoons um, called the, uh, it's played to the t song, the tune, Rosin the Venue, as heard as Lincoln and Liberty. Um, this is a song about the Dragoons. Uh, also, it shows a, a, a painting of their camp encampment. And, of course, also over here where the link Abraham Lincoln is, is the original uh, 1809 stone wall of the original house. And, of course, a Abraham Lincoln himself was uh, born in the year 1809. So that's a, a little secret, and that's quite significant. So if you do stay here at the Cornelius Hoodland Farm, and you stay in the second United States Dragoon Rooms, this is what it looks like. It has a fold-out bed. It has a large bed. Now, of course, this is just after checkout, so the bed hasn't been made yet. Your bathroom is back here, and then there's a laundry room right here where you can fold iron your clothes. This has been the Cornelius Hoodland Farm, Part 11, here in the Second United States Dragoon Rooms on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Be the Cornelius Hoodland Farm, Part 12, here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And today, we are going into the basement. And we're going to look at the original basement and foundation of the house. This is also the basement that after Cornelius Hoodland was captured by Confederate forces. He was taken to the Emanuel G. Trossel House where he was interviewed and then after being interviewed found out that the Major was a Master Mason and he was set free and told to go home and stay in the basement with his family for the remainder of the battle. And here where we're at now is where Cornelius, Anna, and her two daughters hid from July 2nd to July 4th, 1863 here in the basement of the original house and you can see it still has the original uh, log um, foundation underneath the the beam support um, and then of course the first floor which we took a look at uh, in Graham's battery and we'll look later at the merit suite you can actually see the wide uh, grooved floorboards from the first floor this is all a part of the original 1809 structure it is a dirt floor basement that has uh, gravel stone thrown on it for now. Today it's just used as a storage area here for the battlefield B&B &B to store things like paints that they need to paint the rooms and, and etc. Um, it's also where the modern uh, gas heat uh, heating system is as well down here. Um, however, uh, most importantly about this is it is where Cornelius Hoodlin, Anna, and their two children hid uh, after he was captured and then released and told to return to his f farm and for his safety to go into his basement of his home and wait out the rest of the battle. Um, and of course, this is stuff that you don't normally get to see uh, just as a visitor to Gettysburg as a tourist or even uh, as a visitor of the B&B. &B. This isn't an area that you really have a lot of access to. So I sh figured we shoot this video here down in the basement as it relates to the story of the um, Battle of Gettysburg and Cornelius Hoodlin. This has been the Cornelius Hoodlin Farm Part 12 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.
Cornelius Hoodland Farm Part 13 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we're in the Merritt Suite of the Battlefield B&B. &B. This was uh, also Cornelius and Anna Hoodland's bedroom. Uh, it's part of the original stone house. It has the original floors and fireplace from 1809. It also has a great view of the road to the right, which you can see out the window here. And on this wall are different uh, artist paintings of different Civil War uh, personnel or artifacts, as you can see over here. But the most important painting that is in this room would be over here against the west side wall. And that is a painting um, done by Don Stivers called Duel on Yule Ridge. And that painting depicts Captain Wesley Merritt at the Battle of Brandy Station. Now it was at the Battle of Brandy Station where Merritt performed so well that he was promoted to Brigadier General. That allowed him to have his own brigade here at Gettysburg, the Reserve Brigade, which we talked about in the historical videos in this uh, series. Um, and of course, being promoted from captain, being able to be a brigadier general and, and command his own brigade allowed him to fight the final action here along the Emmitsburg Road at the Cornelius Hoodlin Farm during the Battle of Gettysburg. So had he not performed so well at the Battle of Brandy Station, he may not have ever had a brigade to command and fight the last action of the Battle of Gettysburg here. Again, this is Cornelius and Anna's bedroom as well. Um, this is the room that Cornelius Hoodlin died in on April the 9th, 1865 at 11 a.m. in the morning. And of course, his body was taken uh, from the room here down the staircase into the parlor below where he was laid in state for his friends. And we covered the parlor in an earlier video. Also, when you stay here at the Battlefield B&B, &B, as a part of the Wesley Merritt Suite, you also have your own bathroom. And then the uh, bedroom that was their kid's room also is a small bedroom that you stay in. So the suite is the entire upstairs uh, of the original 1809 house. Again, this has been... Cornelius Hoodlin Farm, Part 13, the Wesley Merritt Suite, here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Farm, and this is going to be the Cornelius Hoodlin Farm, Part 14, here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Um, the house is there in the distance, and of course you can see the barn. And I've walked out into a field here, because a lot of times I'm asked about this strange uh, gravestone that sits out here all in this open field. And there's a little story behind it, it's kind of neat. Um, this is the gravestone of a man named Philip Rohr. Now Philip Rohr was an African American man who lived in the Hunterstown area and he died in 1835 at the age of 49 years old and he was buried on his farm in Hunterstown and then of course later the farm in the area of where he was was developed and he was moved into the town cemetery which is a church cemetery and we did a video on that church cemetery as it was used as a field hospital during the Battle of Hunterstown. So you want to go back and watch the video series I did called Battle of Hunterstown Part 1, 2, and 3. Now Philip Rohr was buried on his farm and then later his body was moved to the town or the church cemetery. Um, now that uh, farm was later bought by a man named Scott Murdoch. Um, and, and, the, and the farm was in the Murdoch family, also Wally Murdoch. Now, at some point, the stone was replaced because today Philip Brewer has a stone in that church cemetery. So either this stone was either taken or at some point it became unreadable and it was replaced. And that stone ended up going to the Murdoch family and they kept it in the farm 
which Philip Rohr once either lived at or farmed, either as a tenant farmer or own, we're not sure. But his headstone, or this stone here, was in the barn of that farm. And one of the Murdoch's sons, the boys, uh, brought the stone here to the Hoodlin farm, and for some time it was so it was in the barn of the of the Hoodlin farm here which was used as a field hospital. And of course the Murdoch family who owned the uh, Hoodlin farm before the present owners uh, did, when they sold the farm they sold everything that went along with it including this headstone here. Now the current owner of the farm who runs the battlefield B&B &B, put the stone out here um, and it's kind of a memorial because as we talked about earlier, Cornelius was a part of the anti-slave society, the abolitionist movement. Um, so it's only fitting that a man, a free black man, who was a local farmer here in Hunterstown, and who had probably meant to be buried on his farm, uh, making it his final resting place, and that that did not happen would be memorialized some here on the Cornelius Hoodlin property and that's what that stone does here today. It b basically symbolizes a free black man that lived in the Gettysburg area and of course it also symbolizes the type of man that Ho uh, Cornelius Hoodlin was uh, being a supporter uh, of the free black man or the abolitionist movement here in the 1830s and 40s. Um, one other thing about this is the owners of the the uh, the farm also have this stone geocached so you can you know do like a little treasure hunt if you want to come uh, looking for it. Again this has been the Cornelius Hoodlin farm part 14 the Philip Rohr memorial here in the open field of the historic Cornelius Hoodlin farm. Cornelius Hoodlin farm part 15 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and we're going to talk this is also going to be secret to the battlefield and then we're going, we're going to call this to the right now on July 2nd 1863 uh, as General Lee planned his attacks on the second day um, those, those plans were met with some resistance from General James Longstreet and John Bell Hood and John Bell Hood and General Longstreet wanted to move the Mar army further to the right and try to attack the Federals from the rear. And one of the things that's left out a little bit in the story of the Cornelius Hoodlin farm is Hood was in the direction over here, um, north of us on the Emmitsburg Road. When he and Longstreet told General Lee that they wanted to move to the right, it was to their right, so them facing this day, they wanted to head to the right and then move to the right and go around the Federal Army attacking them from the rear on the long, on the, on the round tops rather. The right that they were talking about was the farm lane, which is still here today, of the Cornelius Hoodlin farm. The same lane that you come here when you stay, uh, the road that leads back here was the Cornelius Hoodlin farm lane, which ran this, in this direction and then went around just to the left of this house and around to the side. And it would continue on past Ridge Road and then, of course, to the behind the areas of the Bushman Hill and the little round tops. Um, so this is a, a secret that not many people know about, that the position that the Confederate, some of the Confederate commanders on July 2 wanted to take moving to the right is actually the Cornelius Hoodlin Farm Lane that sits here just by the house today. This has been the Cornelius Hoodlin Farm, Part 15, and Secrets of the Battlefield, The Road to the Right, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Cornelius Hoodlin Farm, Part 16, here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we're in the leisure room here, which is an addition uh, to the house. Today it's used just to sit around and be comfortable, read books. Um, I do want to point out a few things. There is a painting here of one of the regiments that was in Merritt's Brigade, the 6th United States Cavalry, who actually fought on July 4th in Fairfield, Pennsylvania. Uh, and there was a Medal of Honor uh, winner that this painting here by Don Stivers depicts. Um, of course, 
the wall on the other side of the room is actually the original exterior wall of the 1809 house. And as all houses in Gettysburg that were here during the battle have a Civil War building plaque on the outside of the house, this one is actually located inside. That plaque is actually located inside of the um, house because it was an addition that was added on later. And of course the staircase leads up to the other rooms that we've looked at. And over here in the corner is some of the uniforms, uh, cavalry, infantry, and artillery replica uniforms that is used for the guests. They can try them on, wear them, and take pictures. And of course uh, in my presentation I use the lance from the 6th Pennsylvania Rush's Lancers to show uh, what type of weapon that they started out with early in the war and later discarded. This has been the Cornelius Hoodlin Farm Part 16 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Cornelius Hoodlin Farm Part 17 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and also Secrets of the Battlefield. And we're going to talk about something that has probably never been known or even released at all. Um, here at the Cornelius Sudeland Farm, there is plans right now in the works, as you can see here, for an addition to be put on uh, the battlefield bed and breffix. The original 1809 structure is over here. To the left is all additions. And there's another addition that's going to be put on. But this addition is going to be... Uh, different that it's going to have a Victorian look to it um, and it's going to be named the Frank Furness Room and when that is done we will do a video in the Frank Furness Room but it's going to be uh, an addition named after a member of the 6th Pennsylvania uh, Cavalry Rush's Lancers who would go on in, in 1864 to be awarded the Medal of Honor. Um, he later was a Philadelphia architect, a famous architect who designed different uh, structures in Philadelphia as well as fireplaces and mantles. And um, He's the only person ever as an architect to win the Congressional Medal of Honor or be awarded rather the Congressional Medal of Honor. And while uh, putting the foundation in for this addition, the original Cornelius Hoodlin Farm well was located over here in the corner. It's a 15 foot well lined with stone um, and the well couldn't be saved. It was so deteriorated it really fell apart. But the well is eventually going to be channeled out to the man-made pond that's here behind the house. And this may be the only opportunity ever to see the well uh, live on video. So let's take a look. You can see some of the stone foundation uh, that had collapsed. The well sat here and went down about 17 feet. Uh, this is the well that provided the fresh water to this farm back in the 1800s to early 1800s and even up past the American Civil War in 1863 when Cornelius Hoodlin and his family lived here on the farm. Again, the addition is under the process of being added. It's going to be the Frank Furness room and this is the original well area over here in the corner that once provided water to the Cornelius Hoodlin farmhouse which is over here and built in 1809. This has been the Cornelius Hoodlin farm part 17 and also secrets of the battlefield on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.